Kirsty, Beth, you must be absolutely delighted that you've been announced as the joint head coaches of the Bradford Bulls women's side for 2019. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a massive opportunity for us both and something we're both uh, really honoured you know, to accept. It's um, been a few weeks in the pipeline, but it was confirmed 48 hours ago, so we're uh, really excited already to get, to get going with it. And how excited are you, Beth, to be involved in a club, making that next step up on your journey with a club like the Bradford Bulls, with this massive fan base and obviously the, the women's side after winning so much? Yeah, no, um, obviously we've, we've both just retired uh, our last game two weeks ago. So to have this opportunity to kind of have a next chapter involved with women's rugby league is massive for both of us. And we've got a lot of energy and enthusiasm to kind of still give to the game. Um, so it's the natural progression for us and being able to do it at Bradford Bulls where we've had, you know, a really good um, kind of playing career. You know, Kirsty a lot longer than me, but for me, the last two years playing at Bradford's been absolutely amazing. The support we've had from the fans particularly, but um, just enjoying my rugby has been, been brilliant. So hopefully we can give back to the club now and, and bring our kind of experience to the coaching side. You've both been involved in the, the sport of rugby league for over two decades each playing, so you do bring quite a lot of experience uh, to the role. How, how will that help you? I think it'll be it'll be massive for us. What we've spoke about, what we want to instill into the girls, is is creating that professional environment. And you know, women's super league is going to get bigger and bigger in the next two or three years. And um, you know, it's gone in the right direction. So we need to uh, you know install that into the club and to the players straight away. Really. Yeah, and I think um, you know we've sat down and we've got a real kind of comprehensive plan of what we want over the next not just a year but a couple of years um, and we, we feel really confident we know what, what it takes to be a really successful Super League team um, so we're just raring to go now to start that process um, from now really, yeah. You both mentioned some key words there, commitment, hard work, discipline, obviously that's an ethos that you both carry through as a player and you're now going to carry that in, into a coaching capacity or effectively going to be you know, learning the, the training up the, the future stars, I mean, you must be immensely proud. Yeah, and I think, you know, both of us have had the, the kind of uh, amazing honour of representing our country and I think we've both been in a lot of um, environments where, you know, that professionalism, that kind of commitment, um, that structure um, has really kind of had an impression on us of, of what you need to be a kind of a, a top level rugby league player and to be able to kind of pass that on to the younger girls and particularly with the talent that we see coming through, to be able to kind of get the best out of them is something we're really kind of um, excited to be part of. And of course the club wants to, the women's side to become truly embedded in the Bradford Bulls brand, the Bradford Bulls organisation and Kirsty Beth, you can really help with that integration. Yeah, um, it's massive. We've, we've had some early chats with uh, John Bastian, the head of youth uh, down at Tong and he's really keen you know, to um, help us on our journey as coaches and offer support and guidance and giving us opportunities to work with some of the other teams as well. So we're going to get some real support as coaches, we don't have any doubt about that and hopefully we can uh, pass that on to the players as well. So it's, it's looking really positive for the, for the next couple of seasons. What made you want to become the, the joint head coaches of the Bradford Bulls? Did you both feel it was time for a natural progression? Because obviously when you've been involved in the sport of rugby league, like you both have for, for two decades each, you know, that is a lot of time, a lot of investment that you've put in to rugby league as a player and obviously you must have felt that you could progress to the next level. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things really. I think um, <coughs> firstly, um, really believing in the impact we can have, particularly as a kind of partnership. We've, we've got very similar standards, very similar kind of expectations about um, what it takes to, to be a successful club. Um, you know, we've had a lot of conversations, a lot of meetings about what, what we want to do and from kind of that first meeting we had together, um, we were very excited about the plans we had um, and the kind of joint kind of um, vision we had and I think that's one of the main reasons why we're, we're keen to be involved is we, we know we can have an impact and we know we can um, support the players to be the best they can be. And it'll probably um, sort of halfway through the season when Mark decided he was stepping down at the end of the year, we, we knew that early on. Um, and it just sort of felt like the right time. We spoke about it being his last season prior to having an interest in the coaching side of it, but it was always in the back of you know both of our minds that we'd like to be involved in the game in some capacity. But the opportunity came along maybe sooner than we thought, yeah. like, you know, for for a coaching role. But nonetheless, still really exciting to uh, to see what it brings. 
And let's just focus on Mark Prescott and his achievements. I mean, he's been involved in the original setup, the Bradford Thunderbirds at, at Dudley Hill. Uh, you know, he can bow out with his head held high knowing that he's made and had a lasting impact on, on women's rugby league in Bradford. No, yeah, massive. I mean, he's, he's been brilliant for the club. He was assistant coach um, a long time to, to Michael Lambert before we moved here and he made that transition to head coach and he, he's been nothing but 100% committed and uh, fantastic in, in everything that he tries to do. And, um, you know, he's, he's already offered his guidance and support to me and Beth and he liked us uh, anything that, you know, sort of a mentor, a bit of advice. He's always at the other end of the phone and he's uh, made that quite clear to us. And, and what's the vision for the women's team in 2019? Um... I think I think to compete. I think to to be realistic and you know look where we've been the last couple of years. Um, it's been particularly tough this time. So key thing for us is recruitment, early doors, and um, you know to be competing with them top four teams from from this season. And we, we thoroughly believe that we can put ourselves in a position to do that. Yeah, and I think um, the existing squad we've got, we've got a real mix of experience internationals. We've got young players coming through. We've got players who've, who've only played rugby league you know, one year or two years and I think um, our start point um, is to get the best out of those players as well and I think we feel we can get more from them so you know, looking at our kind of pre-season or pre-pre-season we've got a plan for that um, to get the best out of those existing squad members but like Kirsty says we're really keen to recruit as well and through the foundation and the Bulls building that recruitment pathway is going to be one of the key kind of uh, priorities that we're going to be working on to enable young girls to get involved with rugby league um, and be part of Bradford Bulls. 2018 has been a, a very tough season for the, the Bradford Bulls women's team, especially after those fantastic achievements of 2017 where you went throughout the whole season undefeated, lifting the league leader's shield, the grand final against Featherstone and also that Challenge Cup win against Featherstone. How do you feel you've uh, learned this season as players and, and the side is going to be equipped because as you said the super, the women's super league is expanding mm. the competition the bar is being set higher year on year yeah i think key thing we've learned and talked about a lot is, is controlling the things you can control so you know when when we were getting the performances we, we wanted at the start of the season it's easy to blame you know we've lost a few players to new clubs that have formed this and that but actually getting the, the, the basic things right is really key um, and we didn't have the pre-season that we should have done in terms of fitness and um, we were a bit, maybe a bit complacent about that and I think that's key learning for us is um, we need to hit the ground running from now um, and we know the things we didn't do um, and we're going to do them this year so hopefully that is going to make a big difference um, going forward for this next season. And being able to access the club's <coughs> fantastic training facilities at Tom is going to be a massive benefit for you, Kirsty. Yeah, I mean, we've sat down with uh, pretty much most of the members of the staff now from the Bulls and the resources are going to be, uh, that are going to be available to us next season are, are going to be, just get better and better. So, you know, that's um, really exciting for us as, as coaches and, and for the players. You know, if they, if they know they're coming to a, a world-class performance centre, it, you know, it gives them that extra incentive to feel really part of something pretty special. And obviously, if you want to be a world-class player, world-class training facilities, that's going to be a, a big attraction and uh, a, you know a big green tick on any potential player who's weighing up options of looking at other clubs. Potentially, I'm going to decide to join the Bradford Bulls. Yeah, absolutely, and I think you know Bradford Bulls as a club is on the up. You know, last on Sunday the men have, have been promoted, and there's a real buzz around the club and a real kind of sense of getting back to where it belongs. And I think. As a women's team, we want to be part of that and we want to get the women's team where they belong, which is competing in the top four of the Super League and, and being in those finals. And um, The facilities that are at Bradford are as good as any facilities across the country. Um, so we've just got to make sure we utilise those properly and have the plants in place to get the best out of them and um, you know, utilise all the support that's available here as a club. Um, and The girls that are coming through and that we will recruit will have access to all of that. Being involved in the game for so long, if you go back to when you first started, playing women's rugby league to where it is now how has that change uh, you know sort of like accelerated in the positive i mean i think the level of support now is is huge for for women's rugby league especially when we we started and did any international thing we had to raise all your own money and you know bucket collecting at games and things like that but it has it has evolved and it's just going to get bigger and bigger and you know the rfl have, have stated that you know they'll be I think the applications are out next week, so I'm sure there'll be more clubs that are applying to play in, in the Super League and the likes of Wakefield, they'll, you know, have done incredibly well this season in the Championship, I'm sure they'll be knocking on the door yeah. for and Super League. I, yeah, I think, you know, just 
things like there was the first women of, woman of steel was announced the other day alongside the, the man of steel and you know little things like that just m massively raising the profile of the game the awareness of the game across the country um you know participation in the game is as big as it's ever been um it's you know it's a really exciting time to be a rugby league player um, as a woman or a young girl you mentioned the the man of steel award uh, in manchester the other day i believe uh, there was a young uh, female referee or the first female referee to Officiating a Challenge Cup yeah. final at Wembley, albeit the schoolboy final, Caitlin Beavers, I believe. And yeah, yeah. I believe there's also Tara Jones at St. Helens. So already you can see these grassroots that have been planted, you know, starting to to, to spring and uh, and bear fruit. Yeah, and I think it's, it's it's been seen across women's sport as a whole. You know, the the interest, the support, and the participation in women's sport is is up and up, and particularly in rugby league at the moment, there's a real buzz about that, whether it be refereeing or playing um, and you know it's it's the perfect time to be involved as, as new coaches um, taking on a team to capitalise with all that, that awareness and support that's out there. Is it too early to start talking about goals and aspirations for next season? Um, I think we spoke about ours I think we need to set some of the players but you know ours, ours are to compete first and foremost we'll, we'll go a bit more in depth with the girls but no it's not too early we've started planning already for, for pre-season um, We've got some contacts with the girls in terms of time together before before Christmas. They'll get a bit of time off, and then they're back in January for what's going to be a real tough pre-season for them. And just finally, if there's anybody out there watching this on Bulls TV, on YouTube, on Facebook, Twitter, a young 14-year-old, 16-year-old girl who's wanting to get drawn the inspiration from you both and wanting to get involved in women's rugby league, um, how, how do they go about doing it? I mean, get in touch. Get in touch with the club. There'll be a, there's going to be a pathway put out for young girls very shortly from community clubs all the way through to to Bulls women. You know, ultimately in the next couple of years, we'd like to see an under 19s team, and um, just creating them links with community clubs is massive. So they just need to jump on the internet, find the nearest club, and and you know, give it a go. Or get on Facebook and Google Best Suckley for Kirsty Maroney, and we'll and send us a message, and we'll get in touch. Kirsty, Beth. Congratulations. I hope you've got an incredible journey at this club. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Cheers. Cheers.